Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. On May 16, Photometer for the Mac has been launched. This follows the Photometer for the iPhone and iPad release, which I reviewed in a previous video. If you watched that video, I said that Photometer was a tremendous raw editor, but its subscription pricing, which costs $5 a month, $29 US a year, or $99 US lifetime, was only justifiable if it included the desktop app. Well, the desktop app is here, but is it any good? That's what we're going to find out in today's video as we run through the top five standout features of Photometer for the Mac. At the end of the video, I'll give my conclusion on whether it is worth it. The first standout feature is its top class tone adjustments. The ability to make pleasing tone adjustments is probably the most important feature of any RAW editor. And Photometer for the Mac includes the same capable tone adjustments found in the iPhone and iPad. I've reviewed its tone adjustments in my video on Photometer for the iPad, but I'll give a recap here. As you can see here, the shadows and highlights adjustments recover detail very well while maintaining pleasing and natural looking color, good contrast, and strong detail. The same goes for its other sliders like brightness and contrast. Its texture and clarity adjustment enhance local contrast in the right areas without introducing halos quite common in lesser RAW editors. Just like its mobile counterpart, Photometer for the Mac allows for selective texture and clarity adjustments which allow for targeting of highlights, midtones, and shadows without the need for any masking. The second standout feature is its powerful AI masking. The best differentiating feature of Photometer for the Mac is its AI masking, which is bested only by Lightroom's own AI masking with object selection. While Photometer for the Mac does not have object selection, its other AI masking tools perform just as well as Lightroom's. For example, as you can see here, the Select Subject tool is very accurate in recognizing the subject. The same goes for its Select Sky, both of which are real-time savers. While Select Subject and Select Sky might be present in other competing RAW editors, Photometer shines in its ability to easily add or subtract from the mask. For example, as you can see here, the AI Sky selection did not do the job perfectly. No matter, you can just easily use a brush to correct the mistake. It's the same workflow as Lightroom and just as good. If Select Sky doesn't work for you, Photometer also has a linear gradient tool as an alternative. It's very easy to use and works really great to reduce the exposure in the sky. Photometer also has an AI-based color range selection tool. In this example, I'm using the color range selector to select the boat. As you can see, it's fast and easy and I avoid the tedious manual brushing which would take a lot of time. Another great thing about Pixelmator's AI masks is the sheer number of editing tools that support masks. Most raw editors have a much limited tool set. Here, I'm using the curves tool to perform a local adjustment on the mask area, but you can use pretty much any tool in the color adjustment panel. The third standout feature is its intuitive interface. If you use other raw editors before, you will know that raw editors can be at many times sluggish, power hungry, and overly complicated. Well, I'm happy to say that the Pixelmator team did not disappoint in the UI with Photometer for the Mac. The app is responsive, just like the mobile apps that came before it. It has a minimalistic design without distracting elements, making your photos really stand out. One difference between Photometer for the Mac over its mobile counterpart is Photometer now includes a film strip view for easier navigation. It also includes a basic photo manager that allows you to import, browse photos, view EXIF info, create folders, and perform file name search. The fourth standout feature is the seamless syncing between Photometer's mobile app and Photometer for the Mac. In Photometer, any edits you make, such as the tone adjustments, or layers that you create are saved in the raw file directly. As such, 
you can start editing the raw file on the mobile device, save it to iCloud Drive, and finish editing on the Mac. There's no need to sign in to some special account, and no special file formats needed to do all of these syncing. It's a very intuitive experience. The fifth standout feature is its batch processing. One unique thing about Photometer for the Mac, which is not available in its mobile counterpart, is batch editing. Simply select the photos you want to edit, and the dialog will appear, where you can specify the kind of operations to do with the selected photos. You can do things like auto-enhance, ML crop, export, apply AI noise reduction, and many more. So there you have it. Those are the five standout features of Photometer for the Mac. But is it worth it? Well, in my opinion, definitely so. While Photometer for the Mac does have limitations, like the lack of a fully functional photo manager, which I will go into in another video, if you want quality and fully functional raw editing on all your Apple devices, iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and don't want to pay a steep price, there isn't much choice in the marketplace. For example, if you go with Capture One, that has a much more expensive price, doesn't work on the iPhone, and has no local adjustments on its mobile app. Add to that its $29 US a year subscription, it is just one-fourth the price of Lightrooms, which costs $120 US a year. Add to that the effortless editing experience, and I believe Photomator provides a lot of value for its $29 US price tag. So, I do recommend Photomator if you don't want to pay too much for quality raw editing. But what do you think? Do let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.